And what I've got here is uh, Solomon seal root. And when they're young and tender, uh, the roots have a sweet flavor to them. They're kind of like potatoes. And I'm glad you found some here today. I'm going to share them with you. This is what the Solomon seal root plant looks like. And it has that distinctive curved over profile and a single leaf that climbs up the back side. And just take a digging stick. Try and dig into the soil there a little bit. See, it gives you these little potato-like roots. So I'm going to go ahead and dig all these up and then we'll take a look at them. Alright, this is the Solomon seal root. Okay, these are going to be good. You see the leafage on it. Alright. Well, that brings me a couple steps closer to having a really good meal out here today. So, uh, I'll try to rustle up a few more things, and if you care to come with me, uh, I'll show you how to make a balanced meal out here in the woods. The second food item I'd like to show you is these maple seeds right here. And these are really good food. Some of the, some of the maple trees uh, produce really bitter seeds. If you find a the Norway maple, like what this seed came from, uh, the seed from the Norway maple, you can just peel it and eat it, and they're they're kind of sweet flavored, and they kind of resemble pistachios, which is one of my favorite nuts to eat. But uh, the maple seed is a really good food, and that's that's part two of my uh, my wilderness meal today. I got a question for. You experts out there, is this plant purslane or a plant that looks like it? Yeah, you tell me. Oh yeah, that's good. When drinking water out of streams, especially up here in the mountains where there's just so much mud and so much moisture everywhere, um, uh, things like uh, gyrosporidium and uh, other bacteria are a real danger. But if you can find a spring, you can find a spring head and drink from it right where it comes up out of the ground at, uh, your chances of getting sick right there at that point are you know, substantially de decreased. And if I were, if I were two or three hundred feet further down the stream I would want to uh, boil the water first or use the iodine tablets or something like that to purify it so uh, just be careful I've always liked secluded areas like this there's not another human being for miles out here I've always been comfortable with that. I don't know about you. I have another plant question for you. See this? See this plant right here? See the leaves? Is this a daffodil leaf and quay foil? Or is it just a plant that looks like it? You tell me. Separate all these. I've got my solvent seal root. Nice little handful of those. Got my greenbrier vine tops. A few fern fiddles. Small handful of uh, maple seeds. 
get rid of that. Oh. Well, that's the beginnings of a nice meal right there. Let's see what else I can find. Well, that's enough time spent here. Uh, let me go ahead and head on up the mountain. Alright, now that I've gathered some, uh, some pretty good wild edible food, uh, I'm going to take you back to my campsite and I'm going to show you how to uh, prepare some of them. So let's go do that. Now it's just a short walk through this pine thicket. And it's a nice stand of white pines right here. Don't worry, I won't get you lost. Hey, this place is going to be nice too. It's another one of those secluded places that I like to go to a lot. Yeah, you were right. That other plant wasn't purslane. This plant is. See how it's got the thicker leaves? Kind of reddish stems. These almost feel rubbery to the touch. They're not fuzzy. That other plant I showed you had fuzzy leaves. So this is purslane. So I'm going to pick some of this. And uh, we'll have that with our supper tonight too. And then finally, I just found some sochan. And that's um, also one of my favorite pot herbs. And we're going to pick some of that. Uh, I'll make that with my dinner tonight too. Yeah, it takes a pretty good amount of this. See what the leaves look like? See, it's kind of like a celery leaf. It's a plant called Sochan. I'd like to take a moment to discuss uh, harvesting, harvesting plants with you. And one of the tools I use to do that with is a digging stick, like this one here. And yeah, it kind of looks like a knife blade. And if you look, it is sharp on both ends. See, it's tapered right down to a point. And it's well, flat on the inside around on the outside and the good thing about using one of these is uh, this knife edge right here will uh, cut right through some of the softer plants if I need to dig roots or whatever this end of the stick uh, is a perfect digging stick for uh, getting down in into the dirt and uh, digging up those plants and, and I'd like to demonstrate using this tool with you got here is some pokeweed and for using a tool like this to cut the pokeweeds I always use a, a push motion with the sharp end of it right there so you just slice right through it and it's really the best kind of tool to use it works just like a knife blade and in just a couple minutes I can harvest all these plants and as you can see this is the, just the perfect tool to use because this is like a splinter on the end of it it's all splinters on the end and they're sharp so they cut right through the softer stalks of the, these plants and uh, it's really just the best kind of tool to use if we're digging Solomon seal root I use the other end of this tool.
See? Point facing backwards. Rock it back and forth in the dirt and pry. Pry the roots up. And get you right down in there to those Solomon seal roots and the Indian potatoes and dandelion roots. And so you can see this is a just a, a perfect tool to use for that. Now this is one of the Native American flying knife designs. And it's one of the most useful tools that you can get your hands on out in the wilderness. And yeah, all it is is a piece of wood, but um, don't underestimate a piece of wood. This this tip here you use as a knife blade, uh, as a formidable weapon. Uh, if someone were to use it against you or against an animal or whatever, you, you hunt with this, uh, it'll get the job done. And believe me, boy, this sucker will cut. And one of the first things I do when I start working with stuff like this is I'll take my maple seeds and I'll roast them up so, you know they're just all nice and roasted until they're toasty brown and the good thing about these is when they're roasted like that they have a nice salty flavor to them they taste just like salt and that's going to go really good with my meal Then, on a cutting board, I'll take a wild onion, yeah, it's a ramp, and I'll slice it up, put it in my stew pot, I'll save those for later. And I'll take a wild garlic. Cut the bulb off of it. I usually split those into quarters. Then I'll take my Solomon seal roots. Slice them up into small pieces, kind of like you would a potato. And these little, little smaller ones, I'll just break those up. And I'll take one of my cane teams and cover those with water. And I'm going to boil those until they're uh, nice and tender. Yeah, that should be enough. And then I'll take my sochan, also known as wild celery. Kind of bundle it up, and give it a rough chop,
and I'll cover those with water also. That should be enough. And then I'm going to roughly chop this piece of wild pork right here. Yeah, I didn't really have time to show you me hunting one of those, but I can assure you this, uh, this one came from the woods. I'll have to show you how to make country uh, country salted uh, pork on another video. Alright. That's ready to go. feeding wood to that until my sochan is fully cooked and nice and tender and my Solomon chill roots are are fully cooked and I'll fry up my wild country ham That's going to be a pretty good meal. I'm just going to relax and drink some of this dandelion coffee. Right at the last minute I'll throw together my purslane and uh, prickly lettuce salad. With a little bit of uh, yellow sorrel in it. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah, all that's starting to boil up good. Just let it cook. Okay, here's my salad. I got prickly lettuce leaves, purslane, toasted maple seeds, dandelion flowers, violets, green tops off of that onion that I had. So that's going to be a really good salad right there. Mmm. And to make some genuine red-eye gravy, I'll deglaze my pan with a little bit of my dandelion coffee. Oh, and it has spice wood leaves in it too, so it's a type of wild black tea. I'll have to show you that in another video too. Mm, yeah, red-eye gravy. And the final touch is a cattail root flour and Solomon seal root starch bread that I'm frying right here. I call it a scone. Now I've taken and drizzled my salad with a little bit of uh, the pork fat. So that makes a, a complete salad. And this uh, scone made from cattail flour and uh, Solomon seal root uh, starch is yeah, really not so much like a bread but and it is a bread, it's a starch just like wheat flour and it just, just goes to show you, it doesn't matter what kind of meat you have whether it's fish, possum, raccoon, venison, wild pork, whatever you can have a complete meal out in the wilderness and if you're truly surviving you should have a meal that resembles something that you would have in your own home I'm Trapper Jack and thank you for joining me in my kitchen.